This is the Texas A&M Football Show with head coach Kevin Sumlin. Lots it deep downfield. Under throw. What a catch by Mike Evans. How did he do that? It's intercepted. The Shazer Everett at the goal line. Touchdown. Ben Molina. A 59-yard gallop. Ball wobbles. It's caught. Touchdown. Malcolm Kennedy. Johnny Football with a night to remember. The Texas A&M Football Show. Presented by AT&T. Bud Light, the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. Pepsi, now is what we make it. Grab a Pepsi and some friends and get out there and live it. It's time to live for now. And by Whataburger, proud to serve it hot and fresh 24 hours a day. A happy holidays to all of you and welcome to this bowl preview edition of the Texas A&M Football Show presented by AT&T. I'm Will Johnson with our head coach Kevin Sumlin and on New Year's Eve the Texas A&M Aggies are in the Chick-fil-A Bowl taking on ACC representative Duke. It will kick at 7 p.m. from the Georgia Dome. As usual, coach with us to start the show and since you last played it's been busy recruiting but now's a time where you've got the team back on the practice fields What's important to your squad before you head to Atlanta to get ready for this one? Really, the, the first uh, week and a half is about development of the younger players, getting some extra time, uh, part of a spring football, and then really creating two weeks, one week at home where you're a little bit more comfortable and one week at the bowl site just to get you, get you ready for your opponent. That week of development with young guys, is it a little harder on you and your staff because young guys have been playing a ton already this year. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, it's it's a little bit different. You know, we, we had 32 newcomers last year, and <clears throat> we were able to redshirt um, about half of them, even though we played about half of them too. It's, it's about 17 or so. So uh, what, what we like to do is take the guys who didn't play as much, maybe the guys who were on special teams and the guys that weren't in the one or two deep of starters, and get them a bunch of work in our offense. The guys who are on the scout team, shoot, they don't even know the offense or defense anymore. They, they, uh, they've they been running everybody else's stuff all year. So it gets them ready uh, for, for spring football. We refer to our bowl games as the next, the first game of next season. And it's a chance for our seniors to really put an end to a career and really kick things off for next year, set the tone, and, and really for our young guys to start practicing and. And, and really have something to play for, practice for. Uh, and, and I think uh, we've had pretty good success doing it that way. One thing I noticed right away about the Chick-fil-A Bowl after we announced this as our postseason game, they like the fact that, that it's kind of a bowl rivalry. 22nd straight year the SEC plays the ACC in this one, and they promote that fact. They make no bones about it that they like that it's a rivalry bowl game. Well, since this string's been going, it's ACC 11, SEC 10. You can even it up. Do you ever feel like you take an SEC banner into bowl games now? <laughs> you know what? The first thing we better do is take a A&M right. banner in the bowl <laughs> game. Uh, we, we do. You know, it's, uh, you know, we only had one SEC game, and, and uh, that was, uh, you know, location has a lot to do with it. Last year playing Oklahoma and Dallas kind of right in between in a packed place. Uh, I look for this to be the same deal, you know, we're Atlanta, you're right there in the middle between ACC and, and, and SEC country, so uh, a great venue, you know, th this bowl game is going to be one of the uh, the six rotating bowl sites for for the uh, for the playoffs, mm -hmm. and so, uh, you know, with, with the, the other four BCS current games and the Cotton Bowl, so uh, it's going to be a big time venue, uh, the, the Chick-fil-A people have been fantastic and going to do a great job, and and, you know, it's, uh, it's something that we're looking forward to. Our, our fans, we haven't been over there in a while, I haven't, haven't been there. And, uh, um, you know, we've got great hospitality planned for us. You know, we've seen the, seen the, uh, the plan and uh, our guys will be excited. Like I said, you know, we'll get a lot of work done here, but we got to get just as much work done there um, based on us being somewhere we haven't really been before. The opponent will pre uh, preview them in just a second. Now, if you look at Duke, Probably a lot of people have only seen them play that ACC championship game against Florida State. I think it would be a mistake to assess too much of Duke from that game. They were beaten quite handily, but Florida State, 
has beaten everybody quite handily this year. <laughs> yeah, there's no doubt. Florida State's, uh, you know, there's, there's a reason why they're ranked number one. I, I tell you what, they, uh, you, you go through their schedule, and you know, North Carolina, North Carolina State, Virginia Tech, and Miami. Mm -hmm. They've beat all four of those teams. That's enough to get my attention, yeah. and it should be enough to get everybody's attention. You're playing a championship game, and uh, you represent your side of the ACC. Uh, they've, they've had a heck of a year, and, and, and David Cutcliffe is a solid football coach, has been, uh, always will be, you know, from his time as a coordinator, a head coach, and has been around great players, great talent, Peyton Manning, you know, all those kinds of guys. So we get that, and uh, they're well coached. They play extremely hard. Uh, obviously, they're, they're, they're an intelligent football team. They don't make a lot of mistakes, and, and uh, they take advantage of other people's mistakes. All the best in this game in Atlanta on New Year's Eve. Appreciate it. Thanks. All right. Happy holidays to Coach Sumlin. Happy holidays to you. We'll see you in Atlanta, New Year's Eve. Back with more in just a moment. The Duke Blue Devils are reveling these days, and why not? For the first time in their school's history, they won 10 games in a season, and prior to 2013, they had never been to back-to-back -back bowl contests. That's all changed under head coach David Cutcliffe. And we right now preview A&M's Chick-fil-A Bowl opponent, Duke. It's brought to you by Bud Light, the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. The Blue Devils are making their 10th trip to a bowl game, and the last time they won in the postseason was on January 1st, 1961, in the Cotton Bowl over Arkansas. One reason this team is back to playing football over the holidays is because they can flat out finish, and that may be the most important thing you need to know when it comes to Duke. The fourth quarter is easily their best quarter, outscoring foes 120 to 44 in that frame. That represents the largest final period point differential in the country. They are very good on offense, a lot of weapons and a veteran offensive line in front of them. This is a spot the Aggies may be at a disadvantage, at least experience wise. A&M has had youth contributing along the front seven defensively all year. The five mainstays on Duke's O-line have a staggering 170 combined starts among them. When they throw it, some quality options led by Jamison Crowder. This guy is going to be tough to deal with in Atlanta. 96 catches for barely under 1,200 yards. He's only 5'9", but makes it happen. If he gets three catches in the Georgia Dome, he'll have the ACC single season record for receptions. Switching over to defense, they may not be as good as their offense, but it's not bad either. Duke ranks 73rd in the country in total defense, but that drops to 45th in scoring D. One of the reasons is they can take the ball away. The Blue Devils are ninth in the nation with 18 interceptions as a team. Do not underestimate the task the Aggies have in front of them in the Georgia Dome on New Year's Eve. Remember, they'll have to close 2013 strong to get a good start on what's to come in 2014. According to the Associated Press poll, A&M has a number 20 billing, Duke is number 22. That means this is one of just eight bowl matchups that pit ranked teams against each other. We're expecting a good one in Atlanta. When we come back, we go behind the scenes with Johnny Manziel. The gap between the regular and postseason in college football is filled with the awards circuit, and Johnny Manziel has been a staple on it for the past two seasons. The 2012 Heisman Trophy winner was invited back to New York City for festivities this year as a finalist. And once again, 12th Man Productions went with him.
your most memorable county football play? Man, a couple plays against Alabama are really fun. I mean, that game is uh, extremely This year or last year? Both the plays, uh, the touchdown to Swope and then the, the catch by Edward Pope this year, both of those plays. Back on the ESPN bus, uh, first sports center of, of the trip, uh, on to PTI with two characters. Um, so how this goes. Introducing him to another successful season, Johnny Manziel. Two nights prior to the presenting of the Heisman Trophy in Orlando, Florida, the College Football Award Show was held. Four Aggies were invited, Manziel, Mike Evans, Drew Kayser, and Jake Matthews. That means six Texas A&M football players have been invited to that award show in the last two years. We're back with more in just a moment. Rank in the top 20 all time in postseason appearances. Now, the bowl system has changed drastically since AM went to its first postseason game almost a century ago. But one thing has remained constant if you are successful in this type of event, it won't be soon forgotten. It's the final scene before the curtain comes down on your season, the last act, with hopes of a lasting impression. As much controversy as they've caused, the memories created by them surpass any criticism. The bowl game is still the destination at the culmination of every college football campaign. This is the Aggies' 35th. The school's greatest tradition was born in its postseason debut. Then on January 1, 1940 in the Sugar Bowl, John Kimbrough and company claim a national title. The star reflected on the celebration years later. I never did like champagne. Now I ate all the steak that I wanted. <laughs> Another great, John David Crow, fashioned a 24-5-2 record as an Aggie 
but made just one postseason game. It was his last in the maroon and white at the 57 Gator Bowl. That opportunity nearly didn't materialize. We as a team voted not to go to the bowl because Coach Bryan had announced that he was leaving A&M and going to Alabama. So I had to tell him that the team had voted not to go to the Gator Bowl. And he said, well, we got a problem. He said, I've already accepted it, so we're going to play. <laughs> and so I said, yes, sir, <laughs> we'll go tell them. <laughs> but it was a, uh, an honor to be selected to go to any bowl, and, and as it is today, as far as I'm concerned. Obviously, the Cotton Bowl is etched in the minds of Aggies with 13 trips to the Metroplex. Some of these memories are ingrained and easy to retain. Jarrett, the handoff to Jackson. He did not make it. Well, after three tries, uh, they call a timeout. By that time, it's fourth and two. And what would you do? I mean, if you're fourth and two on the goal line and you don't give it to the Heisman Trophy, <laughs> you better, whatever else you try, it better be successful. So they did what? what I would have done if I'd have been uh, in Pat Dye's shoes. You know, they gave it to Bo Jackson. I told our guys they're probably going to give it to him. Y'all go back out there. We had our fans down on that end zone. That whole end zone was our fans, and it was loud. And I said, y'all go back out there and enjoy this moment. I, I'll send something out there in a minute. R.C. Slocum has been involved in 18 of A&M's bowl games, or right at half. The Jackson stop when he was defensive coordinator is still deep-rooted in his conscience. So is the 1990 Holiday Bowl when he was head coach, in which the Aggies weren't given much of a chance versus BYU. They had made some comments about they wished they had gotten a higher ranked bowl opponent and uh, you know someone that would have elevated them a little bit. No, I, I would never do something like that as a coach to bring something up like that. <laughs> no, we talked about it every day before every practice, the whole thing. We were, we were on a mission. They thought they were pretty good and they were favored in the game and we beat the dog out of them. <laughs> you know? The college game's postseason has changed greatly over time. The holiday menu of bowls is robust to say the least. Title sponsors are all part of it now. Payouts are huge, but these days your win total doesn't have to be. And for the player, it continues to get more lavish. Staying at the Anatole in Dallas and good bowl gifts, great hospitality, and all the way up to the game um, really was a treat. In the end, the bowl game is about the lasting image, ones that live for decades. The traditions, the championships, the reward. Say what you want about college football's postseason and what it has lacked over the years. But don't forget, it has provided us all with oh so much. Of Texas A&M's 34 previous bowl game appearances, 27 have been held in either Texas or Louisiana. This Chick-fil-A Bowl provides us with our first true chance to go way east for the first time since 1978 when the Aggies beat Iowa State in Birmingham, Alabama, and the Hall of Fame Bowl at Legion Field. We're back in a moment to run down the rest of the SEC Bowl slate. A very impressive 10 of 14 teams in the SEC have made bowl games in 2013. You know about the Aggies and Duke. Here's the other nine before we go. The first SEC team to kick off is Ole Miss. The 7-5 Rebels take on 7-5 Georgia Tech in the Music City Bowl in Nashville on December 30th. Before the Aggies and Duke on New Year's Eve, it's the Liberty Bowl between two A&M foes from this year. Both Rice and Mississippi State surrendered over 50 points to the Ags, and they'll meet in Memphis. New Year's afternoon brings the usual array of SEC versus Big Ten matchups. It starts with an 11 a.m. kickoff between Georgia and Nebraska in the Gator. These two met last year in the Capital One Bowl. At noon on ESPN, it's LSU and Iowa in the Outback. The Tigers will be without Zach Mettenberger, who was injured in their regular season finale. Physical football should be on display in this year's Capital One Bowl. South Carolina and Wisconsin smack into each other in Orlando. The day after, January 2nd, New Orleans and the Sugar Bowl, Alabama and Oklahoma. How will the Crimson Tide respond to not playing in the national championship? Many wonder how motivated they will be to play in this one. The Cotton on January 3rd, Missouri fell to Auburn in the SEC championship. Now they take on Oklahoma State in Arlington. 
January 4th, the BBVA Compass Bowl. Vanderbilt will go against Houston. The Commodores are one of three SEC teams playing in the postseason without their starting QB. We mentioned Mettenberger and LSU earlier. Georgia is playing without Aaron Murray. And Vandy will go into this one without Austin Carter Samuels under center. Finally, on the night of January 6th, the Auburn Tigers try to give this conference their eighth consecutive BCS championship. They'll play Florida State in Pasadena for it all. We're looking forward to the ball game in Atlanta on December 31st. A happy holidays, Merry Christmas, and Happy New Year to all of you. See you on our next edition. So long.